Hey guys, nice to see you back again. Today I want to talk about two-factor authentication or multi-factor authentication uh, with Keycloak besides the built-in option with the time-based one-time password which you can use with Google Authenticator app and others. So grab yourself a coffee and see you in a second. I'm pretty sure you all know the option in Keycloak of the TOTP, the time-based one-time password, which a user can configure uh, itself uh, using a Google Authenticator app or some other compatible apps uh, when user logs in so that um, he can configure the application, uh, scanning the QR code and uh, registering the application in um, his account and for any subsequent uh, following logins um, he has to provide the one-time password generated in the app so uh, this is the second factor for two-factor authentication and uh, without that uh, the user is not able to log in so that's great and uh, I always recommend uh, to all my customers and to you out there to use um, two-factor or multi-factor authentication. It makes the world much more um, secure and um, sometimes perhaps it's not possible to use Google Authenticator or some other apps because there are restrictions in your company or data protection so that uh, your users are not allowed to, to use third-party app, uh, apps and uh, share their, their personal data uh, with them. Uh, so um, you don't want to, to create an uh, own app using this algorithm and just want to rely on uh, SMS text-based messages uh, or sending a password via email or whatever. Um, I want, don't want to, to talk about if um, sending uh, one-time passwords via SMS is secure or not. That's another story. But um, if you have the recommendation to send uh, an own generated one-time password or we are any channel um, this makes um, it uh, handy for you this video uh, where i'll show you um, a solution i already uh, created some some months ago and i want to show you uh, how i did it perhaps this will be um, yeah a good example starting point for you to implement uh, your own solution so this is my repository on GitHub. Um, I also put the link to the description of this video, so you can find it there. And um, yeah, um, for this repository, I already um, did a blog post on my uh, website, on my blog, uh, some months ago, and described everything, which I also know now. Um, tell you in this uh, video. So if you like um, this uh, repository, why not sponsoring me and uh, sending me some money via PayPal and uh, saying thanks to me for this. Um, I would appreciate this, but that's not a must. So um, let's dig into the code. Um, if you want to uh, implement uh, an authenticator, um, surprising surprise, uh, you have to use the um, Authenticator SPI and uh, first of all you start with the um, SPI factory. So that's the Authenticator factory in here and setting some static information. You're setting an ID uh, for the factory, for the, your um, provider a description, the SMS authentication, uh, some help tasks, whatever. And uh, then um, you will set some uh, requirements. So this authenticator um, is able to be required, alternative or disabled. So you can disable or enable it, um, set it to um, required so that a user has to um, uh, process this authenticator or it's an alternative so that um, it may, might be uh, processed. Um, furthermore, we have some configurations about the code length, um, so this provider is able to um, create um, various uh, uh, code length of the um, generated one-time password, uh, time to live. So the code is only uh, valid for uh, a certain time, then it will be expired. Uh, specify a sender ID and um, also a simulation mode 
for um, yeah ease for um, development and not um, being in in the need to send an SMS for every um, request during development and printing the code to the uh, server log. So it's not needed to um, to send an SMS uh, actually for every request during dev mode. So that's it. And uh, let's have a look how this uh, is reflected in uh, Keycloak. So we switch to um, our, um, where is it? Where's my browser? To the browser back again. Uh, switch to Keycloak. Um, this is my realm, my demo realm. And we have to go to the authentication tab and uh, make a copy of the browser flow because we want to use it in the browser. Um, the built-in browser flow can't be modified, so we have to copy it. I already prepared it, um, named it browser with SMS. Um, the two-factor SMS is not yet configured. I have to uh, add it to uh, this step, to the, to the form. Um, after the username password form um, has been processed, we want to use the um, SMS two-factor. And we have to add an execution for this and select the SMS authentication of our uh, of our um, authentication provider. Uh, we save it, I have it in here, set it to required. So these are the uh, the choices uh, we configured in the code. And now we have to configure um, this uh, provider, uh, set an uh, alias, call it. SMS off. Uh, we set the code length to default of uh, six digits, time to live uh, 300 seconds, five minutes, and the sender ID will be Keycloak. That's the sender of the, um, the SMS. And uh, for now, we're turning on the simulation mode. So it's saved. We have it here. And uh, to be able to use this authentication, um, we have to um, set it on in the bindings. I already did this. In the browser flow, we have the browser with SMS. Uh, default is browser, just browser, the built-in flow, and uh, we now need to use the browser with SMS. That's what we need to configure um, in Keycloak. If you now want to log into your application, um, just do the regular steps, entering your credentials, username, password, and after hitting sign in, you will be presented with uh, the form to enter the code. Enter the code we just sent to your device. Um, because we have enabled the simulation mode, we just have to switch to uh, the server log file. And we have the simulation mode printed to the log file. Would send SMS to a number with this text. So this is the code. And this code is valid for five minutes. Just copy the code, paste it in here hit submit and you're logged in. Um, signing out again, um, another um, login, just entering the credentials, just hitting, oh, entering uh, a wrong code, hitting submit, you get an error message because it's not the uh, correct uh, OTP. Switching to the um, server log and copying the generated code entering it here and you're done. So um, of course, if the, the code is expired, you also get uh, an um, error message and you can't um, authenticate and log in uh, as a user. So um, let's lo have a look to the source code, how uh, all this is done um, in particular. So besides the authenticator factory, um, we have uh, an uh, actual authenticator provider implementation. And um, yeah, we have um, two um, important steps. That's the authenticate method and the action method we have to implement. Uh, I come back to this uh, shortly. Um, some other configurations. We have a, a method requires user. So this authenticator needs uh, already an authenticated user. We have to know um, that there's already a user. Um, in case you're implementing um, something like uh, username password where um, the, the user starts to authenticate uh, itself, then um, that this might be uh, false. 
um, but in, in our case, we need the user already to send him um, an SMS. And uh, also this is um, checked in here, configured for the method. Um, we're checking if the user has um, a, a attribute named mobile number. Of course, you can set it to whatever you like. Um, in my case, I call it mobile number and the user has to have this um, this attribute. If we switch to um, to key cloak and have a look to the user, we can see uh, the attributes. Um, my user has this mobile number, um, in this case, uh, a fake number. Um, but the mobile number is configured for this user. Otherwise, if this um, value will, will not be there, I can um, delete it and try to uh, sign in. Um, we will see that um, we are sorry, uh, we can't do a login because the credential setup is required. There's a standard default uh, error message from, from Keycloak. So the uh, user has to be uh, configured um, appropriate. So I can um, enter it again, number, let's say plus some fake number and um, yeah, save back to the code. So yeah, that's it. The requires user is true and we have to uh, provide a mobile number. So then um, let's start with the authenticate method. That's the first method um, the provider will process when uh, entering the uh, provider step, the execution. Um, some uh, configuration we get from the context, um, the, the key clock session and um, the user, the actual user who's um, authentication currently. And then we get uh, the mobile number from the user. Um, that's why we um, need to check if the mobile number is uh, available. And uh, in my case for the demo, I don't check uh, the mobile number of uh, proper format, country codes or whatever, because I enter it, it um, uh, properly. So for production um, application, production usage, uh, you has to, uh, have to, to uh, validate uh, the number, of course, further. So then we get from the configuration, the length and the, the TTL uh, we configured. In our case, this was um, switch back the six digits and um, the, um, the 300 uh, seconds. We have the length and the time to live. And uh, with the length, we are creating um, a code. So a random string is a util class, which comes with a key cloak um, dependencies. And we can just use this to create a random code of our uh, desired length. And then we'll um, storing the code into the authentication nodes of the authentication session. Uh, we get the authentication session from the context again. And there we still store the code and the time to live. We just um, add the uh, time to live to uh, the current milliseconds. Um, perhaps um, you have to provide uh, another method in your production environment. Uh, but this is enough for uh, demo purposes. And uh, then after storing it in the authentication session nodes, uh, which will be available through the whole authentication process, um, we just um, getting uh, the theme, the locale, and um, from the theme, we get the messages and uh, the SMS authentication text of the messages. Um, I provided it here in the messages files. Um, this is um, SMS auth text. SMS auth text is here. Your SMS code is hmm and it's valid for hmm minutes. We just saw this in the server log file. So um, that's it. We're um, creating uh, the text and then we're actually sending um, the, the message. In my case here, it's an SMS. Um, but you can also send an email if you want or do whatever you want with uh, the created code and the time to live um, um, a duration. And um, after they are sending it, uh, the user will receive it on um, his mobile phone and then just call on the context. Um, and the next challenge set um, in the form 
the appropriate realm and create the, the form uh, of the TPL code. Uh, that's, a, um, that's a constant I defined in here, uh, the login SMS FTL. And the login SMS FTL, the free market template, is also contained in this repository. It's just a free market template for um, showing this um, form we saw here after um, authentication, uh, authenticating ourselves. Um, and this form is the login SMS FTL. So you can override it and customize it uh, yourself uh, as you like. Here are used the um, default um, classes of the log default login um, form uh, login theme of, of Keycloak. So this uh, will be um, created here and um, with the challenge sent to the user's browser. So after this, um, the um, user enters um, the code in here. So it's uh, here again and. Um, when the code is entered, um, then the action method will be called uh, by Keycloak. And in this action method, we're just um, getting, I will do this in this way, uh, just getting the code from uh, the request the, the user sent to the server. And then we get the stored code from the authentication nodes and the time to live from the authentication nodes checking if uh, both uh, set, otherwise we're presenting uh, an error. And then we're, um, we're comparing the entered code uh, with the, the stored code of the authentication um, nodes. And if it's valid, we're checking also um, if the code is still um, valid, if it's not expired. In case it's expired, we're also setting an error message. In case it's invalid, um, also an error message, just another error, uh, error message. This is an expired error message. This is an invalid error message. Both is specified again in the message properties. Code has expired or invalid code entered. Please enter it again. We saw this already. And in case if it's valid, um, just call the context success. Then um, Keycloak knows this authentication uh, authenticator is uh, processed successfully just with the context success. Yeah, and that's it. Then the user will be logged in. Yeah, that's all you have to do to um, have an own uh, two-factor, multi-factor authenticator in Keycloak. And um, as already said, I put the links to the repository and to my blog post about this to the video description where you can um, uh, reread uh, uh, the whole story again. And um, I also recorded um, here um, the process of uh, having all this uh, stuff working with an actual um, SMS when the user authenticates uh, itself, uh, signs in, then um, uh, a uh, SMS will be sent and uh, from uh, the phone of the user, he can enter the code sent and uh, will be logged in. So um, yeah, that's pretty easy, um, straightforward approach. Of course, again, um, this is just for demo purposes, my um, repository, and you have to um, do more validation, more checks in a productive environment to use it. Um, yeah, just do it, um, deploy it to the key cloak, uh, create your flows, and um, yeah, you can use it. That's it. Yeah, like always, I hope you had fun watching my video and it helps you to get further with Keycloak. So if you like this video, give me some thumbs up and share it wherever you like. Subscribe to my channel. And if you have any questions, put it down in the comments. And yeah, hope to see you next time. Bye.